Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 37 and verse 19 and verse 20. And it says the following. And then, then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him. Cast him into some pit and we shall say, What wild beast, some wild beast has devoured him. You know, if you think you have sibling problems, I'm pretty sure this doesn't come close. It's when your siblings get together and instead of, you know, planning to beat you up, they just want to find a way, easy way to kill you. Really bad, dysfunctional family. And we, we read on, it says, We shall see what will become of his dreams. You know, it's one of the greatest compliments in life you can get if your critics call you a dreamer. That means you no longer have a dream. The dream now has you. Your dream can either be a fantasy that you think about once in a while or it can be your identity that even critics call you by your dream. I am tired of the day where critics call us by our weaknesses, by our mistakes. Let's be known even by our critics, by the size of our dream not the size of our mistakes, not the size of our weaknesses. Is anybody with me? The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. One famous lady said that. Hold fast to your dreams for if dreams die, life is broken winded bird that cannot fly. I'm a dreamer. I have to dream and reach for the stars. If I miss a star, then I grab a handful of clouds. All our dreams come true if we have the courage to pursue them, said Walt Disney. Story of Joseph is the story about dreams. It starts with Joseph getting a dream, Potiphar getting a dream, uh, not Potiphar, Butler, a wine bearer got a dream, a pharaoh got a dream and it seems like everything is about dreams. It's either somebody's dream coming to pass, somebody's trying to crush somebody's dream or everything is about dreams. And the very interesting part about Joseph's story is that every dream in Joseph's story came to pass. I want you to write this down. Dreams come true. Joseph's dream came to pass. A butler's dream came to pass. A wine cup bearer dream came to pass. A pharaoh's dream came to pass. Every person in Joseph's story had a dream and those dreams came to pass. We must understand one thing about dreams is dreams are dangerous because they come to pass. It is dangerous to dream a small dream as it is dangerous not to dream a dream at all. We see in Joseph's story and we see also in the Bible that God communicated with the dreams to people in Joseph's story. God didn't speak to Joseph through the scripture. God didn't speak to Pharaoh through the prophet. God spoke to them through a dream. Now the difference between these guys and the dreams that God will use for you is this. Is that these guys dreams were dreams when they were asleep. But we also know people in the Bible that God spoke to through dreams when they were awake. For example, we know Joseph. God spoke to Joseph through a dream. We know that God spoke to the wise men through the dream. We know that God spoke to the Philistine king who had a barren wife, who had barrenness in his field and he said through the dream, Abraham is the prophet and if you don't honor him properly, all of your women will not bear children. We see all throughout the Bible God speaking through the dreams. Dreams and visions are the language of God. He calls those things which are not as though they were. Dr. Young Gicho is credited by the statement that I just mentioned that dreams and visions are the language of the Holy Spirit. That means one of the ways God wants to communicate to you is through dreams. 
and one of the ways you can communicate with God is through dreams. Now I am not referring to right now dreams you dream when you sleep. I'm referring to dreams you dream when you're not asleep. Because Abraham had a dream and he wasn't asleep. It was the dream of the stars and that dream became a reality. God says your descendants will be as numerous as the stars on the earth but the first started as a son and then he eventually got a nation and now three world religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam all claim Abraham as their father. Abraham's dream has become a reality. We see many other people in the Bible. David had a dream to build God a big house. God says hold off, wait. But Sam, uh, Solomon gets on the field and David passes away and he builds the dream and the dream becomes a reality. Dreams come true. If you want to partner with God, you must understand God's language. His language is not Spanish. His language is not English. His language is dreams. It's important that we develop our relationship with God through dreams by not aiming for the stars first but by aiming dreams that are short term and then build our credibility with God that will enable us to aim for higher dreams. For example, if you uh, have just gotten saved it is not good for you to plan to have 20 home groups. To have a dream that I want to have you know 20 home groups. It is good to start your dream by planning in your dream to have a home group. 10-15 people. If you are 14 years of age it is very wise for you not to have a dream of having 12 children. It is good for you to have a dream to finish high school. Have a dream of one day finish college. Have a dream of getting your car. Have a dream of staying out of debt while you're all doing all of this. Having a dream of getting married and then children. Don't jump into a dream ahead of yourself that you skip the process. Why it's very dangerous to do that? Because you will see that dream not come to pass. You will get disappointed in yourself. You will get disappointed in God and you will throw the baby with the bathwater and say dreams is only for people who are in Disneyland. But in the real world, you grind it out. No. In the real world, you can live a life of dream if you know how to cooperate with God. Every baby doesn't start with running. It starts with crawling and then starts with walking and then running. Do same thing with dreams. Can somebody say amen? Number two. Not all dreams were good in Joseph's life. Joseph's dream was positive. Uh, Two guys in jail, one of their dreams was positive. The other guy's dream was extremely negative. He had a dream of he's gonna get hanged. And though the dream was extremely negative, that dream still became reality. We see Pharaoh, he had a dream. Part of that dream was that he is going to be having this great success and the other half of the dream is he's going to have a great poverty and both of those became a reality. The challenge about faith is this, is faith is believing what you do not see. And the reward of faith is that you will see what you believe. A dream, many people say, well, I can't have a dream. First, we have to start with this. Do you already have a dream lodged in your heart that is negative? Meaning that you constantly expect your life will fail. That you constantly expect things won't turn around. That you constantly expect nobody will show up to my home group. People that I will invite, they will not come to church. Yes, they prayed for me but you know what, the addiction is stronger than Jesus and I'm gonna slide back. If you constantly have the dream, yes it worked for somebody in their finances but it's not gonna ever work for me. You have to be careful that a negative dream, a negative mindset and a vision is not lodged in your heart because it has the capacity of being a self-fulfilling prophecy. Dreams don't only work when you go forward. Dreams also work when you go backwards. Dreams are like the gear in the car. You choose which way you go. Neutral, forward or reverse. But dreams come true whether they're good or whether they're bad. Amen. Number three, non-dreamers fight dreamers. And then end up working for them. 
I'm going to speak to dreamers for just a moment and then I'm going to speak to those who are going to work for the dreamers. There's a lot of people and they come to church many times and you can sometimes see people who are going to dreamers and those who are there just to have fun and just to fellowship and pastors preaching and they're, they're talking and everything and, and this is not for them and, and everything. Their, their goal in life is just to have fun and, and all this stuff. I'm going to talk to both of the categories for just a moment. Joseph has a dream and his brothers begin to attack that dream and they begin to make fun of him. His brothers didn't have a dream. It is dangerous to live without a dream and a vision from God. Why? Because instead of helping someone, you begin to hinder someone. Have you noticed Joseph's capacity? Joseph's life resembled a person who always helped someone. You see Joseph helping a Potiphar. You see Joseph translating someone's dream in jail. You see Joseph elevating quickly to being a manager. You see Joseph helping Pharaoh with his dream. You see Joseph always helping someone with their dream. Why? Because Joseph was a dreamer. Only dreamers unlock other people's dreams. You can never help someone's dream if you don't have one yourself. When you don't have a dream when you don't have a vision and you live your life like a cat or a dog going to sleep eat and recycle repeats and your life has no vision and no purpose the danger in that life is this is that by default you take the position of instead of helping a dream you begin to fight someone's dream pastor is moving with the vision and i don't like it and you begin to cut everything and begin to rebel and cause other people to do the same why? Because when you don't have a dream, you begin to attack someone else's dream. Get your own dream. And you will help other people to unlock theirs. Can somebody say amen? When you have a dream, what it produces within you is positive emotions to help other people. The Bible says faith works in concert with love. That means people who are positive produce other positive emotions of love. People who are negative, people who are bitter, offended, people who are easily touched and you, you slightly rebuke them, slightly correct them and all of their feathers disappear and their heart sinks beneath their feet and the world crushes. Those kind of people cannot, they don't have faith. They have too much bitterness, too much offense and too much negativity and those kind of people cannot do two things. They can't receive love because no matter how much love you give them, it's never enough and you, they always find a fault with you. And secondly, they can't give love because they're too busy licking their own wounds. Negativity is the selfishness at its best. When you are positive, when you are full of faith, only then you can be loving. If you are a negative person, pessimistic, you always find problems in opportunities. You're always bitter, always mad, always angry. I'm going to give you a little prophetic word. Every relationship you start will never succeed. Negative people make miserable relationships. Only people who have a dream, means they have faith, have love and hope. Love does not hang out hurt. Love does not hang out around people who are bitter. Love only hangs out its best friend called faith. You want to attract love? Build faith. You want to get love? establish in yourself a dream a vision only then love gets attracted if you are negative and pessimistic i'm going to tell you what you will attract lust it will taste like love it will look like love it will smell like love the only thing is you will get hurt afterwards and it will hurt like lust real love only is attracted when there is faith and when there is positivity when bitterness is gone when offense is gone, when the dream is there, it attracts and makes you the person who helps other people. If you don't have a dream today to have your own home group, you're not going to mentor other people. What you're going to say is, I am too busy. My life is too hectic. I don't know and honestly, I don't care about other people. And it's not that you're not a caring person. It's not that you're a selfish person. It's that you're a person without a dream. If you get a dream, 
something happens within you you become more caring for other people like Joseph when you lose a dream and you live your life just paying bills and going through the motions next thing that happens is that kind of a life produces within you a person who fights a dreamer to tries to stop a dreamer rebel against dreamers and at the end if you will have somewhat submission you will end up working for them but God wants you to be the dreamer not to be the person who fights those dreams can somebody say amen every person in here has to have a dream you have to have a dream if you are in debt you dream to be out of debt if you are single and you are of that age and you are out of your warrants <laughs> and the FBI is not looking for you no more and you've been freed from the demons and you are ready to mingle you should have a dream of being married if you're married you should have a dream of having your own house instead of paying a landlord like myself and making him blessed <laughs> if you've been in church for over three to five months you should already have a dream of having your own home group why because Jesus told us to go and make disciples and it's impossible to make disciples by just meeting with somebody who is as miserable as you and licking each other's wounds that's not discipleship that's called gossip and that's called sin discipleship is not just finding somebody who is constantly looking for attention and babysitting them like Mariana mentioned discipleship is you having a dream I'm gonna see people saved I'm gonna see people discipled my house is not it used to be for parties for beer and for alcohol and for immorality it used to be for violence but now my house is for the things of God and it is for a home group if you have a home group have a dream that God will give you 12 home groups imagine that live in that breathe in that and God will make that a reality in Jesus name can somebody say amen I want to share with you one more thing about dreams is dreams die daily on the rock of temptation dreams crush daily on the rock of temptations our prisons are overpopulated by people who refuse to resist temptation our graveyards are overfilled by people who yield to temptations and if there is one thing that can stop your dream it is not the haters it is not the people who don't like you it is not the naysayers it is temptation it's not even the devil who can stop your dream it is the devil who can present an opportunity in which you fall into temptation and there he crushes your dream Joseph had a dream he went through the dry pit he went through a rejection he went through betrayal and all of that didn't destroy his dream actually it brought him closer but then Satan brought him a trap and this trap came in the form of a temptation temptation is an opportunity to choose temporary pleasure over permanent pain this temptation in Joseph's life didn't come in the form of weed or alcohol but it came in the form of a woman now I want you to for a moment imagine with me Joseph is thought by his family to be dead Joseph is not loved by his family they rejected him and got rid of him and got some money for it so Joseph is completely alone Joseph in this place as a slave Joseph out of all the people in this world has an excuse to indulge in sin because his excuse is the same one Satan offers to you and offers to me. You deserve it. Your life is hard. You had a hard week. It's okay if you get drunk. You have a hard life. It's okay if you go and ease yourself a little bit in the club. Your life is so challenging. It's okay if you give yourself a little relief. I believe Satan came with those exactly same words to Joseph and said you know what your daddy thinks you're dead your brothers want you dead but they couldn't succeed in that Potiphar keeps you as a slave Joseph you deserve it have fun you're a young man you have feelings and plus she's not that bad looking go and have fun 
and Joseph recognized my life is hard I don't want to make it harder my life's already been difficult and Satan the last thing I want is you to multiply that difficulty that was Joseph's response you know the second lie Satan brought to him well you're not gonna sleep with her just mess around don't sleep with her flirt with her flirting is not sin having sex is sin but Joseph you're smarter than that why don't you just go and just flirt with her and Joseph not having a pastor not having a bible not having videos on deliverance not ever having testimonies of people who lost their lives the DUIs not having none of that does not stand there and flirts with the woman the bible says he fled would flirting with her sin of course not flirting with her wouldn't be committing sin but Joseph somehow in that age without Facebook Twitter Instagram Snapchat and all of these social media sites knew something we don't flirting leads to falling sipping leads to slipping Joseph knew something we don't it's not about how close you can get to the cliff without falling it's how far you can run from the cliff to stay on the course of your destiny we have many generation today who simply say things like lad I know bible says drunkenness is sin but I don't get drunk and I usually ask him this question what is drunk uh, I don't know so the bible says a drunken will not inherit the kingdom of God why would you ever want to gamble with your eternity to find out what if in heaven God already set a standard and you don't even know about and you're gambling with your eternity Bible clearly stated if what you do to another brother weaker than you causes him to fall into sin it's better that they tie something heavy on your neck and drown you in the Columbia River meaning that you may take a sip and afterwards go normal but the brother beside you or the sister who was addicted to drinking for 20 years sees you take a sip and says if she can take a sip but she will take a sip and she will fall and the bible says that falling and none of my fault bible says it is your fault and you will give God an answer for that because of that you have to be like Joseph if you have a dream now I want to speak to dreamers if you have a dream you have to understand Satan wants to destroy your dream and this is how he will destroy it he will cause you to have a mindset where you will say I don't want to fall into sin but I'm sure flirting wouldn't hurt and then you start flirting and you don't recognize how you found yourself on the top of a Potiphar's wife in bed every person who falls first flirts and the reason why we flirt is because before going into temptation we convince ourselves it is okay to flirt as long as I hold my horses and don't fall you can't flirt and eventually not fall if you want to protect your dream make this in your mind before temptation I don't flirt with sin in the area of alcohol you make a line for yourself not once in a while what if I'm tired I want beer or there it's flirting you make a line not drinking has not killed nobody in the United States it won't kill me when it comes to smoking you make a line for yourself not if I am exhausted and tired I'll see I'll play but I'm not gonna be addicted you make a line for yourself I'm speaking to the dreamers same thing in the area of relationships you're seeing this beautiful girl you're going out talking there's in a group you make a line for yourself that in a me and her we're not getting physical she's not going putting her hands into my my hands and I'm not putting into hers I was about to, Jesus have mercy on my soul <laughs> on the hands Lord on the hands and if he wants to hold your hand say you didn't put anything on it it's not yours there's nothing on my fingers that belongs to you why do you make that line 
because when you draw that line in the sand not well if he treats me well takes me to my favorite restaurant and feeds me good gives me compliments then you know what I might you know give him a kiss on the cheek he can kiss me on the cheek and then from the cheek there's such a small distance and then it goes there and there and next thing that happens we're so in love sleeping around you got pregnant and he moved on and you're heartbroken why not his fault nobody forced you you didn't make a decision there is a line and you don't cross it I don't care how cute how handsome and what kind of size of your rims on your car you don't cross that line I don't flirt with sin can somebody say amen when you don't flirt with sin this is what happens yes the jerks the pedophiles the rapists and lust horny beasts they will run from you but this will happen you attract God's blessing and secondly you get protected at the age of 25 you finish school at the age of 26 you have a family why because you were like Daniel you made a decision I'm going to Babylon and I make a decision I'm not gonna eat of that I don't care the consequences I'm not gonna see well I'm gonna see how it looks if it tastes good I'm gonna try first no 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 I make a line before I don't want to just fall I'm not gonna even flirt with sin why because my goal is not to see how close I can get without going to hell how close I can stay to my dream so I can reach it as soon as I can can somebody say amen you know when people who say things like that to me many times and they say you know it's okay to do this I just don't want to do that and I ask him this question imagine you're married is it okay for your wife to kiss another man no oh! I said why not it's not sin it's not adultery why do you get so defensive if your wife goes on a date with another man and holds hands if your wife comes to you and says is it okay honey I've been talking to this guy is it okay if, if we go on a vacation with him you will say oh of course honey, no problem as long as you don't commit adultery no you will get mad and you will ask her this question how dare you ask the question is it okay your goal is not to how far you can get from me without committing sin your goal is how close you can stay with me so you don't even want that sin that's how Jesus sees the issue of alcohol, drugs, pornography and all other issues. When you ask God, Jesus how close I can get without slipping, Jesus says listen I want you to be so close to me that that doesn't even draw you in. You should be asking a question what is wrong in my relationship with you that I want those things. Can somebody say amen. Don't flirt, flee from sin, you'll protect your dreams. Now I'm 29 years of age, I've seen people flirt. I went to school with people who flirted. I had people who were in our church who flirted with sin. Some I asked them, I begged them. And some who were funny and cool and famous. I have not lived long enough but lived long enough to see how flirting leads to falling. License taken away. Reputation is such where parents tell their kids if he's there nobody can go there. They can't hire them. And then people like that come to rent Monoa properties. I can't rent them because of their background. Things, things always go against them and their dreams crush one by one, one by one. Why? Because you don't listen to the pastor. You don't listen to the word of God. I'm asking you right now. It might be costly to draw the line but the price is worth the reward you are protecting. The reason you got to protect it is because you have something to protect. Joseph had a dream to protect. Always remember your young lady, you're protecting a dream of your future marriage. You're protecting a dream of your future business. You're protecting a dream of your finances and of your blessing. You want to protect it? You can't have a dream. I'll be successful. I'll be slipping, sipping, falling and tripping and I'm just going to be flirting with sin. That's not going to happen. That only exists in video games. In real life, if you flirt with sin, ask Samson. Samson said to himself, I am not going to ever tell anybody the secret of my power. And he fell in love with Delilah. And Delilah asked him the question, but Samson says, no. So Samson gives her an answer. Instead of running from Delilah, Samson flirts with Delilah. He says, if you bring a bow, strings and tie me, seven of them, I will lose my power. See, Samson is flirting. But he says, I will never cross the line. She brings the seven bowstrings. He tries them. Nah, didn't work. If you bring me new ropes, if you bring me, so he comes a little bit closer, but he says in his mind, I'll never cross the line. 
I'll sleep with her but I'll never tell her the real secret. This is sin for me to, to tell her the real secret. But she take, he takes one more step close. He says, bind me with new robes. They bind her with new robes. It doesn't work. And then he takes one more step further. He says, well, if you take the seven locks on my hair and wool, wool them into this special thing, then I'll lose my power. He already start going from robes to hair. Which where his power was. And the next step, he said, if you cut my hair, flirting will lead to falling. If it, it did for Samson, you're not him, you will also fall. The way to not to fall is make a decision before the temptation. I don't flirt with sin. Can somebody say amen? My life is too exciting. I have too much to lose to play games with sin. Number five, the last one. What does not kill your dream makes it stronger. Can somebody say amen? Failure is a fertilizer for your dream. You must understand is that the challenges that you have in your life, God is able to use anything and everything if you're a dreamer. See if a person gets rejected like Joseph, they will cry themselves, become bitter. But see if you're a dreamer and you get rejected, you get redirected. See, if you get a failure as a normal person, it can define your life. But if you're a dreamer, it fertilizes your life. I'm going to give you a scripture from Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And this is what it says. We know that all things work together for good. Now, it doesn't say we know all things are good. But all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. This means all things work for those who have a purpose, who have a vision and who have a dream. If God could use a raven to feed a prophet, if he could use a donkey to speak to a prophet, if he could use Judas who thought he's betraying Jesus and making some money but he used that to accomplish his purpose. In this broken world God will use anything the devil will even use to destroy you. He will take advantage of that and say you know what since you are in your purpose we'll use anything to help you accomplish that purpose. The best thing about being a dreamer is no pain, no problem in your life is ever wasted. Everything works for you. You will not see how it works for you in the moment. Only when you reach your dream, you look back and you say, you know what, what I had to go through, I pray to God, I'll never go through it again. But I'm thankful because if it wouldn't be for that, I wouldn't be here. Every dreamer says that. And you will say that about your wife because a dream makes your pain on purpose. Without a dream, your pain is pointless. Without a dream, you're a mother bearing a child. With a dream, you're a mother birthing a child both experiencing pain except one has pain that has purpose the other one has pain that only has sorrow every suffering you go through if you have a dream it has a purpose at that moment it feels like destroying you but it's making you I remember you know when I was about 16 years of age and we had my aunt Larissa's brother uh, Ravim uh, he came to one of our youth services and he was a little bit uh, boozed up he came and there was a very small group of people and I, I, I was trying to preach in English at the time and I was so struggling. People were already giggling and laughing of how terrible my English was and he was there. He was drunk and so he started to make fun of me in front of everybody. I remember I felt below carpet. I felt so disgusted. I felt so, I was so insecure, so bad and at that moment I actually wanted to quit the youth ministry that I was leading for just a few months. And because of certain things, I didn't quit. God gave me a dream through the Winko and everything. And today, you know, I look back last Friday, uh, we were on my dad's house working on the house. And uh, this same gentleman whose life now um, through very unfortunate mistakes has been destroyed. He, the cool guy before, the cool guy now is no longer. And he came and he talks to me like, uh, like I'm his pastor with respect, with honor. Uh, ask if I'm hungry. I said yes. Uh, brought some tacos from the taco truck and I remember I'm standing there doing wires and looking at him and I'm like you know what you nearly destroyed my life 15 years ago. You crushed the very security that I had. You stamped on it, spit on it and I'm looking back and I'm like I'm so glad that happened. At that moment I felt so horrible but it made me search deep to find why I do what I do and today he's no longer my enemy. 
he's now looks up to me and he is thankful for what I'm doing and grateful the fact that I preach my friends your life will change circumstances will change your problems have a purpose if you have a dream if you don't have a dream your problems will kill you your problems have a purpose when you have a dream can somebody say amen let's rise to our feet we're going to come to prayer